you guys will enjoy my interview with this former professional poker player. A professional? <laughs> professional. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay, I just want to make sure that was right. <laughs> uh, he was also a teacher. He is the co-founder of a brand new flower shop, which I am excited to talk about, named Bud and Vine. And he helped lead the entire Holacracy rollout at Zappos, which is the biggest rollout ever. So put your hands together for John Bunch. Thank you very much. Yeah. You're the man. All right, so what's Holacracy? Well, it's very difficult to describe, but essentially what it is, um, is trying to uh, organize companies uh, really like cities are, or are organized. So when you think about cities, nobody's going around telling people what to do. Um, people naturally find opportunities and seek to, uh, seek to act on those opportunities. Um, research has shown that when the, as the size of a city doubles, productivity per resident increases by 15%. Um, but actually, as companies double in size, the exact opposite happens. Okay. So why is that, right? Bureaucracy. Right. Oh, yes. I mean, the I red, think we the all red know. Tape it. Is holding yeah, them the all red. Back. That's yeah. right. That's right. Um, so if we can break that down and we can allow people to really work on what they're passionate about and really uh, seek out opportunities, um, we feel that companies will actually become more productive as they grow in size, which is the opposite of the trend that we have right now. So what Holacracy really uh, looks to do is empower people to do that through self-organization. So um, through allowing them to see opportunity and do something about it and organize their teams um, based on opportunities that they sense, not based on a job description or based on a manager okay. hierarchy. Just giving them power in their own little that's vertical right. kind of? Yep. Okay, so is it something that's good for startups? And if so, uh, why? Um, so I think one of the things that Holacracy does that is actually very beneficial for startups is um, it allows the, the question of organization is, what would you do with your company if you had unlimited time and unlimited resources? Wow. Um, and that's one of the Fun inherent... Yeah. <laughs> and that's one of the inherent questions in Holacracy. Um, and for a startup, what that allows you to do is really dream big. Like, you may only have four people, right? But what would you do if you had 100 people, right? right. And it allows you to think about that and organize your company as if you had this this big company feel, okay. right? And you had all these resources. Now, there's a second question of what do you prioritize? And there are kind of systems for how to do that. I didn't ask that one, though. That one sounds tough. <laughs> what do you prioritize? Yeah. Well, and that's, that's actually a very difficult decision. But I think one of the benefits for startups is that it allows you to think about, dream big, and think about how would you set up your organization if you had unlimited resources? And then it gets really clear on what should you be prioritizing? Right, right. Uh, and, and allows you to make those so, decisions So, so you separately. can kind of filter your day-to-day -day activity, I guess, into what you could see the company becoming, and that just helps like, not waste as much time, right? Exactly, exactly. So I think okay. in startups, and I've been in one in the past, yeah. um, you get caught up in, in, in really having challenges of what is important right now, right? And there are all of these ideas flying, and sometimes they kind of go in, in a bunch of different directions, and there's no real... Um, there's no real structure to figuring out what should we be, what should we pr be pursuing. And I think one of the, the um, advantages of, of Holacracy for a startup would be um, that there's a specific intent and focus on what should we be prioritizing our time on right now. Gotcha. And, and, and I know this concept is very difficult to understand and it's kind of amorphous, but, yeah. um, but there are some definite benefits for a startup. Okay, and how many people downtown are you? Like, what's the, what's the layout look like as far as beyond Zappos for downtown and Holacracy right now? Uh, so downtown project is also um, running on Holacracy. Um, I think okay. you had Brian on a couple. Yeah, of, yeah, uh, yeah. We Brian. had a, yeah we had him run a meeting with Batman and his super villain. So it's good. It's good. So Brian is the finally they could finally get Batman if they had Holacracy. Yeah. You know? Um, Batman is the or Batman is the founder of Philocracy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Brian, I'm in, I'm in. yeah, uh, that would be awesome. Uh, Brian is the founder of Philocracy, um, and so Downtown Project is running uh, on Philocracy right now. How many employees is that total? What's that? At Downtown Project, how many employees is it? Oh, I don't oh, even yeah, okay. know. Uh, 150 maybe. Okay. Uh, that's plus or minus 150. Okay. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, but uh, also some of the downtown project related companies, I think you had Fred on from MoveLine. Mm -hmm. um, they're using Holacracy. Um, so Catalyst, there's a number of companies around um, Project 100. There's a lot of companies around downtown project that are using Holacracy, which is really interesting because we have a, a shared vocabulary around oh, right, um, right, right. 
around what it means to run an organization and, and how we do that. Um, so it's really cool. There's actually a summit um, next Monday and Tuesday all about Holacracy with um, some of these downtown project related companies and companies throughout, um, throughout the nation that are running with Holacracy. So um, it's really interesting to have a community that's focused around a, a similar organizational structure. Yeah, it actually it is really neat. And um, any trouble set scaling it at Zappos or is it, is it scaling up that big? Well, uh, Zappos is the largest company to run with Holacracy at this point. Um, okay. The previous biggest was around 350 people, and okay. uh, we're at around yeah, 1,500 people. Way bigger than that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so definitely there's, um, there's some issues, some, some new challenges that we're facing um, at Zappos with, with Holacracy. Um, some of them are, how do you break down um, and change some of the systems that are um, inherently in place at a large company. So things that you don't necessarily have to worry about at a startup, things like uh, progression and performance evaluation. And, and some of these things that you really have to have for a large company, but at a small company at a startup, yeah, you just that, yeah. that doesn't even matter, right? Yeah. Um, so we are having to tackle some of those issues for um, a lot of times yeah. the first time um, when figuring it out for Zappos. Cool. Yeah. All right, so you're a big flower fan, I heard. Well, so yeah, you're the co you're the co-founder of a new flower shop. Are yes. you are you into flowers? Like you you can like <laughs> I, I mean I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean like you can like that's a type and that's another type. I know not that much about flowers, um, <laughs> but uh, I, I did have a passion for starting a small business, and I never really knew what it was going to be. Um, and I wanted to start a small business in downtown Las Vegas, and I and I was just kind of thinking about what was really needed in the area, and trying to cross that with the friends that I had or the business acquaintances acquaintances that I had yeah. that I thought would be really good runners of um, owners of a shop. And that kind of crossed in a flower shop for me. My um, uh, co-founder, Christina, uh, has a lot of uh, history and passion, more importantly, um, with flowers. And so we're really excited to bring the flower yeah. shop, Bud and Vine, to, yeah, uh, I'm excited. to Las Vegas. Okay, and where can we expect to, to shop for these flowers at? Um, so it'll be uh, just a couple of doors south of La Camina for people who are familiar okay. with the area. Um, it's actually in an old- La Camina fans, yeah. <laughs> it's actually in an old renovated um, uh, hotel building. Um, oh, okay. And there's going to be a number of other shops there, like a juice bar, a donut shop, um, a sushi restaurant. Um, so we're really excited to be there, and we're really excited to bring kind of a different slant on flower shops uh, to downtown yeah. Vegas. We're going to be doing. Um, have you been to any of these places where you can like drink wine and paint? Oh like, no, that sounds fun. Though. Yeah, I'd be down. Um, so that's kind of a new trend that we're looking to bring into uh, kind of the flower industry, where you'll actually be able to come in, pick out flowers by the stem, and put together arrangements right there in the shop. So and not drink, a, and drink wine. Uh, hopefully, working <laughs> okay. with the city for licensing on that one. But get him, get him drunk and selling flowers. Like I am down yeah. with that business model. Um, so we're we're <laughs> we're excited about that and and to see how that works out. That's awesome. Okay, so can you, uh, can you go back one slide? Because we have a we have a photo of your new room, this tiki room. Uh, this yes. is out of control. Tell us about how you <laughs> you just ladies all the time and like this crazy tiki vibe. So tell us about this. Um, so I live in the Gold Spike, which is just uh, just down the street. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to do something a little bit different with my uh, with my room. Right. Um, and so I it's had a this tiny room too. It's not yeah, very it's big. Like... It's uh, probably one eighth the size of this room. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanted to do something a little bit different, uh, and I ended up landing on uh, tiki room um, after <laughs> some of my friends warned me against it. But I just went with right, it that's anyway. That's when you got to go yeah, strongest. Right? That's right. <laughs> um, so uh, I was a little bit inspired by Frankie's, which is a, a downtown uh, haunt uh, tiki room here in, in Las Vegas. Yeah. Um, and so I decided I wanted to make my room into a tiki room. Okay, I could, I could buy that. And how'd it go? Was it easy to find this thing? Well, I, I don't know. What would you do if you wanted to make your room into a tiki room? Where would you go and look? Oh, the roles have reversed, huh? Um, <laughs> I... God, I don't really know. Uh, yeah, Party America maybe? Maybe just Amazon? Yeah, I don't know. It's really hard to maybe put together all of that stuff. Who knows? So yeah. for me, I think the natural place to look if you need something a little bit strange, a little bit weird, is Craigslist. Craigslist. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. Um, Tell me where this story goes. Who owned this tiki room before you? Um, so Some nutcase? 
Well, <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. He could. Uh, that's <laughs> not saying uh, you're in debt. Because eventually, uh, when you sell it, you might. Yeah. Be, yeah I don't. That's not. <laughs> yeah. So um, I looked on Craigslist, um, and I was looking for various tiki things. Yeah. Uh, I just searched for tiki, um, and I found a, a few various tiki items here and there. Um, and then eventually, I came across a post that said tiki room. Take like the whole thing. And I was like, well, that's pretty much exactly what I want. <laughs> so um, called the guy up. Uh, he's like, he seemed pretty excited to have me come out and check it out. And long story short, uh, pretty much 24 hours from then, I had a fully had established room. tiki yeah. room <laughs> in, my, in my place at Gold Spike. So um, we have Tiki Tuesday. Uh, audience members, come by and check it out. Oh, really? Oh, I yeah. didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Put the plug um, in there. It's good. So, yeah. <laughs> tiki, okay, tiki Tuesdays, just all day you can hang out in your room? Uh, only on Tuesdays, but okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Um, I got to deal with them on Thursdays. It's... Hawaiian shirts are a must. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's um, great. What were you doing here? Just uh, that was in the glow room at Gold Spike. I don't yeah. know if you've seen that, but uh, there's a like a 3D glow room at Gold Spike. So that yeah. was during the launch. This uh, should, this just comes up when you Google your name. So I thought that was oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a it's just like a horse with a pizza or something. That's actually <laughs> a little pony with a pizza. That's a that's a from. picture of me when I had more hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you very much uh, for coming out and talking to us. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> Uh. Uh.